Hello, everyone, and welcome to our latest In the Community special. I'm Jennifer Beck. God calls each of us to serve him, but the specifics on those callings don't look the same for everyone. Today, we're going to introduce you to four local individuals who are making a big impact on the kingdom of God. Still to come, a local author uses a book to share the message of Jesus, and then we bring you exciting news about the Allen County Gospel Tent at the fair. But first, we want to introduce you to Anna Morales. She and her husband are co-founders of Give Joy to One Ministry, a mission that is reaching the poorest of the poor in Guatemala. I'm so happy to have Anna Morales here with us in the studio. Give Joy to One Missions is a ministry that has a heart here in Lima, but the heart is in Guatemala. Tell me about this ministry. Sure. So our main focus, focus is um, orphans and low-income families. Mm. We started about 12 years ago as a ministry, but we were there before just helping out and we had um, we wanted to adopt and the adoptions in Guatemala closed mm. so um, we had some friends in Missouri we were really good friends and they have a daughter from Guatemala and we decided to start going back and helping out at the orphanage mm. um, we have been blessed to be at that orphanage for 12 years mm but we also adopted a little village outside the city. Wow. And um, we have built a church. We help in the school at the village. And now we are doing uh, wells. Uh, we actually don't do the wells. We partner with somebody that does the wells and we help with the pipes. So from the wells, we um, buy all the pipes that go to people's houses. And um, now we have more villages that have asked for our help. We try to stay small because um, everything is expensive mm. and um, we focus on our small homes. Um, we have three homes in the city, orphanages. Mm. Um, I don't like to call them orphanages. Yeah, um, yeah. They're, they're, they're a home base. Yeah. Uh, we have 22 kids in one orphanage and then the other ones, we have different numbers just because they go and come and, you know, they rotate and move around. But on a given day, we have about 70 kids that we, that we help out. Hmm. And we have a special needs home that has been open for two years, and they're adult children. Oh, wow. um, we have only six kids there with five in staff. Um, they all have very high end of the spectrum of special needs, yeah. and they, they need a lot of help. So hmm. we almost have one nanny per child just because they are older and they need so much help but our ministry is to it started as you know helping orphans but it has grown to so much paint a picture for me of what it's like in guatemala um, because here in the united states i would venture to guess one of our pretty rundown houses could be considered a nice house compared to some of what they have correct um so i grew up in guatemala and um I grew up in a very shelter home, I think. But um, after we moved to the States and we started helping and we saw the need, we wanted to adopt and all that, you know, I have been into places that, you know, it's a home, but it's just a little, you know, three wall shack with um, a tin roof and tarp around. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now we're building um, six homes in a dump. Uh, we have really? 22 families that live in the dump. There's five homes that has already been built. We're building six more and hopefully, um, you know, by the end of the year, we'll have more funds to finish all the homes. Um, so we have 22 families that live in the dump and um, Sounds kind of strange that we're building in the dump, but this is all they know. This is their home. Can you describe for me what it's like in the dump? Um, it's very shocking even for me. Uh -huh. um, so I'm taking a new team down on Saturday and it's, you know, it's very overwhelming. You come into a, to a grounds and you just picture trash everywhere. The smell is very overwhelming and there's no bathrooms there and there's people that live there. 
So it's very humbling. And when you come back to the States, mm -hmm. it's harder because we are so blessed. Huh. Even the people that have barely, you know, that live in a very low income here have so much more. Wow. Um, in the village where we work, they live in about six to seven dollars a day, but the families are very large. Some families have 12 kids and they keep having kids because their hope is that the boys will help in the field. Mm. Um, the infant mortality is very high mm. because of the, the nutrition that they don't have. Mm. Um, the mothers usually, you know, after having 12 kids, your body is you know, right. very run down. Right. So the kids are very um, underweight. Hmm. And there's programs in Guatemala that the government has tried to help with. But um, it, there's 17 million people in Guatemala. In, in, in Guatemala is in, the size of Tennessee. It's the size of Tennessee, yeah. yes. So it's, we're very small. But, um, you know, there's still a lot of people that don't go to the city they stay in the villages. So, you know, after fourth or fifth grade, sixth grade sometimes, they quit school. There's no further education that mm -hmm. they can go to. Um, they would have to go to a bigger town or the big city. And they, you know, when you live in a village in a mountain, yeah. that's totally not possible. You don't wanna leave your family. You don't know how to live outside a village. They live very, very poorly and there's no medical care so we have brought a doctor every year that we go mm. and that's the doctor that they see mm. so that's pretty much what we do <laughs> so by the time you you watch this um we will have uh, th this trip will have already happened because we're taping this ahead of time. But July 2nd, Anna is, and is Jose going as well? Yes, so Anna and her husband Jose are taking 16 people? 16 people, yep. Including a doctor. Yes. And what do you expect to happen? Um, our plan is to go visit the homes first and then move to the village and do the, these uh, homes in the dump. And then we're going to also help in building a school in another village. So you're helping orphans, which there are 370 to 500,000 orphans in yes. Guatemala. You're helping families. You're helping communities. This is, this sounds like it's this big. I mean, wow, it's amazing. Yeah, God has opened so many doors for us. At the beginning, you know, our budget was like $4,000. And right now we just only in materials, we spend $37,000. Mm. So our ministry has grown so much. So yes. we're unfortunately just about out of time because I would love to hear more and more stories about, about what's happening there and your experiences, but how can people help? How can they pray? How can they give money? What are the next steps that people can do? Yes, so the best thing, please pray for us. Um, we have so many things that we wanna do. And because um, there's so much need, we have to really be wise in how we spend our money. We do focus first in our orphanages. They're the ones that get, you know, our kids go to a private school and the special needs kids have a teacher that come to their home. Mm. So we always need money. Um, if you wanna uh, donate, 100% of all the donations go to our ministry. Mm. We don't take anything, we don't get paid. Everything goes back to our ministry. You and can, they can go through the website? Yes, okay. go to the website, givejoyto1.com, and you can see past trips, you can see updates on the kids and pictures, and all the information is there, but you can reach out to me anytime. All right. Yes. Anna Morales, thank you so much for sharing thank with you. us, and uh, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. Thanks. Anna and the mission team recently returned to the United States and are happy to report that the weather was very accommodating. Eleven shelters were built for the families living in the dump. The children living there got to experience a vacation Bible school. Special time was devoted to the orphans and two classrooms were built for educational learning. Learn more about this mission, including their coffee fundraiser, by visiting GiveJoy21.com. Still to come, an in-depth look at this year's Allen County fair gospel tent. But first, I want to introduce you to Dave Sealshot. He wrote a book that gripped my attention. 
And I think it will do the same for you. His book is called For the Good of All. Let me tell you, I have a great book to tell you about. It's called For the Good of All, and it's written by David Steelshot, and it is a, well, I'm not going to tell you. We're just going to get into it, but let me tell you, you want to read this book? I read this book in like three days to give you an idea of how good this book is. Dave, welcome to the TV station. We're so glad that you're here with us. Thank you. Let's just jump right in and talk about For the Good of All. This is a fiction book with a faith focus but there's crime, there's intrigue, there's uh, suspense. You got a little bit of everything wrapped up right here in these pages. Yes, I, I enjoyed writing it. It kind of wrote itself. Um, and, and there were times when I would, I would get the hero into a, a situation and then I didn't know how to get him out. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a, a lot of, of prayer involved in, in writing it as well. So let's start by just talking about the plot. Um, you've, got, you've got a police detective. Is that correct? He's a detective? Yes. Okay. Give us a little bit, um, just to get into it, to give people an idea of what they would be reading. Well, Jay is a small town detective. So he um, had a population of about 30,000 in this town. So he, as the detective, he, he's, they don't have a you know, homicide department and special victims unit and all the kind of things like you see on, on Law and Order. He, he has to do it all. So, um, so he's, he's responsible for just about any kind of crimes that might require investigation in the town. So he is, uh, he's busy doing that. He has, he has a wife, he has a little four-year-old girl that also take up a lot of his time. Um, but, but he's missing something in his life and uh, uh, he grew up in a very difficult background, and so when he became a detective, um, he's kind of a, oh, you might say a really go-getter type person mm -hmm. on a crusade. Uh, and then his, his mentor, when he was a, a kid, gets accused of molesting a scout. And uh, these mysterious FBI guys show up in town to... Uh, handle the investigation. And uh, Jay kind of tries to figure out what's going on, but, he, but the uh, evidence appears to be pretty airtight, so he believes them. And, and then uh, some things begin to not look right, so he, his instincts kick in and he begins to start his own investigation into the, into the accusations against his mentor. His so Jay's mentor, mentor um, comes to Jay with, with some words that are faith-based words that, that God has given him, that he gives Jay. And that kind of changes a lot of things in Jay's mind, doesn't it? Yes, it, it sows the seed for Jay's redemption. Um, and, and that leads him on his journey, his faith journey, which, which begins right there. And uh, yeah, John is the, the mentor in he had introduced Jay as a child, but Jay was not open at that point in time, but you know, it stuck in the back of his mind. So the book, when you look at it, For the Good of All, it um, does not appear to be a Christian book. Now, I'm not gonna say it's not a Christian book, it is, but when you look at it, you think, oh, this is, this is, this is a mystery, this is a crime scene investigation. But through it all, weaved through the whole thing is the importance of the heart of God in individuals. And that's what you see through, through all of it. Because for Jay, we aren't gonna tell the rest of the story, but we do know that the redemption of God's love is the key for all who have that hole in their heart. Yes, and what you see in our society today is this question of if you have a, a good, something you feel is good for everyone, and, and there's a nominee or a candidate or someone who opposes that, uh, you, you see a lot of personal destruction of the person who opposes the plan that you mm. think is for the good of all. Mm. And the, the book asks that question, is that, is that really the way God does his business? You know, does, does he destroy, does he want you to destroy people who disagree with you because you think that, that your program is better than his or hers. And so 
that's at the that's at the heart of the book, um, and uh, and Jay's investigation gets in the middle of that as well. Do you also have a desire? This is more than just a story. You want to see the Holy Spirit really use this for good, for the good of all here in our society too, right? Yes. Yeah. There there are societal issues that are confronted in the book um, that that are really rampant right now. But it's at the heart of it, it is an exciting story for people to read and enjoy. And, and yet, at the same time, there is a message there that uh, I would hope that they'll understand and see. Well, we are running out of time, unfortunately, but it is not running out of time for you to get a copy of this book, For the Good of All. Now, it is available at Barnes & Noble or Amazon, but you have your own website as well that people can go to, which might be the easiest way for people to get the book. That would be davesealshotnovel.wordpress.com. You can see it on the screen, davesealshotnovel.wordpress.com. And people can also contact you if they have questions. Yes, and yes, and I'm open to doing signing um, events and, All right. and talking to churches and elsewhere if they have interest in doing that. Perfect, perfect. Book signings, talking to churches, these are more things. The first thing you gotta do is get the book, read the book. I read the book. I honestly don't have time to read a lot of books. This book grabbed my attention and I think it will do the same for you as well. Good, good, great book. Do you have any more on the horizon? Um, I, I have one that I started, but I have, uh, I, I'm to the point now where I'm going to have to read what I wrote before. I, <laughs> it's been a long time since I worked on it. <laughs> all right. For the Good of All, written by David Sealshot. You can get your copy. Just go to davesealshotnovel.wordpress.com and then uh, go to Amazon and write a good review because that's always helpful as well. Yes, it is. Thank you. We're quickly running out of time for this 30-minute special, but we can't go until you hear all about the new things planned for this year's Allen County Gospel Tent. And there's one word in that title that gets all the focus, gospel. Well, it is fair season and the Allen County Fair is coming up and I am especially excited about the Gospel Tent. The, there is a great lineup and we have a new group of individuals running the Gospel Tent. We've got Lori with us, who's the president. Debbie is the vice president of the Gospel Tent. And let's just jump right in and talk about, um, let's just talk about changes because we're having some changes this year as far as how the Gospel Tent goes. Yeah, so, um, one of the things that we felt uh, led to do was to put a fresh face on um, just the presentation of the gospel tent. So our hope is, is that every night out of that platform and this opportunity that God has given us that we can proclaim the gospel and provide people an opportunity to respond to it through the avenue, through the medium of the music and the testimony that will be on stage every night of the, of the fair. And we'll talk about yeah. the lineup in just a moment. But if you went to the Gospel Tent in the past, you know there's been some incredible groups that have come in. And I want to promise you there's going to be incredible groups again. The reason why we have Lori and Debbie here is because the previous director retired, so we needed to have a changeover. And, you know, sometimes when, when that happens, it's hard to get new people. And I was so excited when I found out that you guys stepped up and said, yes, we believe God's calling us to do this, yeah. do this project. Yes, yes. yes. When it was uh, laid on me and presented to me, I waited a couple weeks and I prayed on it. And I said, Lord, you've brought me to it. You're gonna lead me through it. <laughs> and everything has just fallen into place. And all of my thoughts on the gospel tent, on reaching, making it an outreach, reaching the younger generation is very important. We want to reach everybody as well. So that's with the change of the lineups come into play as well so that we can reach some of the younger, younger kids. We really, right. really want to reach the younger generation. Yeah. That's very, that's very important. Right. Yes. With the, the, the partnership that has always been with the ministry, Children's Choosing Christ, mm -hmm. um, you know, they've reached the younger kids. And then we, you know, went right, we kind of missed all the generations in between. Yes. And so the lineup reflects um, trying to draw in those younger generations, even from, you know, the teenagers to the young adults and even to, you know, like 
our older age group of people. Yes, just so. everybody. And we want them to know, you know, so many people walk by the gospel tent. Right. You know, they heard of it. They've never been to it. So many. And uh, we want to really say this is a place to come. Yes. This is a good, you know, we want to we want to freshen it up and liven it up with the word of Jesus yes. you know, and just with the word and let them know that he's here, we're here and we're all here, you know? <laughs> right. Well, let's go into the lineup and see what we have. Like you said, there really is some something for everyone and every age yes. demographic is here. So we start off Friday night, seven o'clock with the Perry's. Yeah. Yes. We're really excited about them. Yeah. They're a great dynamic group. Yeah, yeah, a lot of favorites. Yeah, and of people. Yeah, and a lot of people. Yeah, and we and once again we want to, we want to appease everybody, you know, and keep every you know everybody happy with the changes that are being made. Yeah, that, that's changes a are, traditional. Change is hard. Group. Change, yeah. change is hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. we're not trying to leave anybody out. That's not a, that's not it. Like, oh, we're just going to, because that's not what it's about. It's from you know from like Lori said, from the younger, you know, from the younger to the older, it's everybody. So we right. want to make everybody, we want to appease everybody. Well, the Perry's is a great group to get that started yes. with. Yeah. And just a reminder, um, you don't have to pay for these concerts. You just have to pay Absolutely. to get into the fair. Right. And all of the concerts with the exception of Saturday, which we'll say is at seven o'clock, seven o'clock concerts. So yes. Friday night, the Perry's, Saturday night, the Bobby Bowen family band. Bobby Bowen. Bobby Bowen, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They're a traditional kind of a country gospel group. Bobby was involved in a, another uh, gospel group, I think back in the 70s and 80s. Since then, he's developed his own family group and they travel all over the country. But I thought it was a great draw because yeah. he's got his kids there. And we're, th you know, one of the acts told us before young people draws young people. <laughs> yeah. So, yep. Yeah, and I, I enjoy, really enjoy the family bands at. Oh absolutely. yeah, they're just they perfect are. for the fair. Exactly. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, Sunday, August 21st. Let's see if I can butcher this one. The Nellens. Nellens. All yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I hate to say this, but I really wasn't that familiar with them. But after I looked them up, they're mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. They're amazing they group. A, great yeah. gospel group. Yeah, they are a great gospel group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of it is more gospel and not, uh, there's not a lot of quartets like there was mm -hmm. in the past. Uh, we, we, there's a lot of gospel. So. Still that genre of music. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Monday, August 22nd, The Sound. Mm -hmm. They're a younger group too. Yeah, yeah. newer. They newer. were there last year. Yeah. They were the last night. Really didn't draw a great crowd, but they're dynamic. Mm -hmm. Lots of energy, yeah. younger, and I think people will love them. I hope that they draw a younger uh, generation yeah, and also. Since then, they have as well done a lot. Oh, they so, have yeah, climbed they've the climbed, charts. They've climbed, yeah, so yes. they, I think, yeah. So even mm -hmm. even their stage performance could be stepped up a bit a from a year ago, yeah, just yes, from right. everything they've done yep. the last well, yeah, year. Their promo. Which it doesn't matter really. It's not yeah. about stage performance, yeah. right. but it's nice to. It, enjoy. Yeah. I think more oh, yeah. people will be familiar with them this year yeah. than last year. Great. Tuesday, August twenty third. So this is a special night because you have a local group, the Lot Sisters, mm -hmm. and then you're going to do a movie night. Yes. yes. So the Lot Sisters, I believe they started out just singing in their church. Um, they put out a CD, um, and that was how I discovered them, through their CD and through a personal contact. Um, they're beautiful, beautiful they sound, are. and they, they have are. such a Angelic. heart, <laughs> such a heart for sharing the gospel through their, and their underlying mission is to raise awareness for um, recovery addiction. Hmm. And they all tell those, their story. Um, there, there will be a, a wonderful testimony associated mm. with what they're going to do. And mm. I anticipate they're going to draw a big crowd. Wow. Great. That's mm -hmm. Tuesday night. And then after that, you're going to show the movie A Walk with Grace. Yep. Yes. And yeah. we're hoping to reach a lot of the campground kids. Oh. You know, maybe they're a little bit bored. They, you know, need to get out of the right. fair. Come get your popcorn or your fair junk food and bring it, sit under the tent and enjoy a movie. Wonderful. Wednesday, August 24th, a name we've heard a lot, Glory Way. Yeah, yeah. they're an up and coming also, excited for them. Yep. All right, and then here's where I really feel the change. Yeah. This is where I think we're gonna, we're gonna shift. Transition, shift yeah, transition and, and into that. And mm -hmm. get a younger demographic, because Thursday night we have contemporary Christian music artist Ryan Stevenson coming. Yes. Wow. So excited. Wow, yeah, this is free, is, guys, free. Yeah. 
You yeah. don't have you don't have to pay to get yeah. this ticket. You pay to get into the fair, and you can go to a Ryan Stevenson concert for free. Yeah. yeah. And that will be an acoustic show, which I've watched some. It's just as good. Mm -hmm. just, he's just as good no matter what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. His message is very strong, and yeah, I'm really excited about that too. All right, mm -hmm. and then Friday, August 26th. I am they. Yeah. Right? Wow. I know. And WTGN yeah. is helping bring yes. them. Yes. Thank yes. you they've, to them. Yes. yes. They've Scott been a, Young and Scott's been a huge blessing. Yes. Great. On this. Well, even as far as uh, just calling him and going, hey. <laughs> he has. He's, he's we been, really he's appreciate been a blessing. what he's done. Do. And I'm sure he'll be there, the whole gospel yeah. tent with his nice round <laughs> <Yeah>. setup. <laughs> and yeah. he'll and be he there will. hanging and out. And he will. Yep. <laughs> We're going to put him on the spot a few times, I think. Very good. Very good. So I am they. I mean, that's. Yeah. That's. That's a headliner. That's yes, pretty nice. It is. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. And then finally, you wrap up Saturday, August 27th, with a group that's gotten to be very well known. Yes. And I know that the leader is all about the gospel. Yes. Dr. Josh Steinke with Worship Anyway. And yes. that will be at 6 o'clock. Yes. The other ones are all at 7, but this one will be at 6. Yes. The reason we did that, first of all, um, we wanted to give plenty of room for the Holy Spirit to do whatever they wanted mm -hmm. to do. Hmm. Um, we started. We did start a little early to give them a little extra time because um, for us, uh, we have to shut, close everything down that night. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to give him a little extra time. One of the uh, other bonus things is, so worship anyway is going to be what we call the grand finale. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the grand finale. It's going to be awesome. Um, all week long, we're going to present the gospel. There's going to be a clear, definitive gospel message throughout every night of the fair. We're also, at the end of that, we're going to provide people who have responded to that, who maybe have never followed the Lord in a believer's baptism. There's going to be an opportunity for them mm -hmm. to do that. Revive Ohio is going to bring their baptismal. Wow. Wow. And, and, and what a memory yeah. that people would have if they received Christ during the fair or wanted to rededicate their lives they could say they got baptized at the fair. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's gonna, that that's is gonna great. be awesome. Yeah, we're excited about that. Mm. People can find more information. You've got a Facebook page. Yes, yes we so do. So they can like that Facebook page yes. and find out more. Yep, of course, it this is will called also... the Gospel Singing Sing Tent yeah. of the Allen County Fair. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right, and um, this will be in, there's always a program that comes out and it will be in there, but every night, yeah. seven o'clock, with the exception of Saturday, six yes. o'clock. Yes. Just yes. go on over, just go on in there, just wander Come in. Come check us out. You don't even have to be there the whole time, just wander your way in because it is definitely going to be a great, great yeah, time. It's very welcoming, very welcoming. We're just going to be there with smiles. Showing the love. On. Yep, showing the love. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Thanks so much, ladies, for thank, thank giving you. us the information. Absolutely. And looking forward to seeing you out there at the fair. Thank, yes, thank you. Thank you. You can watch any of these interviews again by going to our website, WTLW.com. We also want to thank the many of you who have given a special $40 donation in honor of TV44's 40th anniversary. Donations like that make shows like this possible. If you haven't had a chance to do so, we invite you to make a donation of any size by visiting WTLW.com forward slash donate or simply give us a call at 419-339-4444. We'll close now with this scripture, Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. If you are seeking your calling in life, keep calling out to God and he will guide your path. I'm Jennifer Beck. Thanks for watching this edition of In the Community.